The Duval County School Board has approved a multi-million dollar plan to buy plexiglass partitions for classroom desks. They will be used this fall when classes resume. Last week, the district also released more information about what it's considering when kids return to campus. And Duval County School Board Chairman Warren Jones joins us via Zoom this morning. Good morning, Chairman. Thanks for being with us. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. So we have a picture of what the partitions will look like. The board has said that the priority is putting them in elementary schools. Will they just be used in those schools? What about middle and high school? The plan is to use them secondary, middle, high school, and elementary. It depends on the type. And, uh, we just approved that yesterday at our uh, special board meeting. Uh, we anticipate acquiring about 50,000. We don't know yet. I mean, we will acquire, but we, we're looking at that. We want to make sure, I know parents have a lot of questions, uh, and these are uncertain times. And the only thing that we can say is that we're doing the best we can as a board, working with the superintendent who runs the day-to-day -day operation of the district. Uh, her staff is doing a magnificent job of trying to make sure that we reopen schools in August as safe as possible, meeting the Centers for the Disease Control uh, guidelines and making sure that our kids are safe. That's the most, that's the priority. So that's given the, concerns about cost, right? So these are going to cost about $4 million. Already the district spent about $10 million on COVID-19 changes in costs. I know you've mentioned that, that, the fed, that federal money will, will be used to cover this. I mean, are you sure of that? What if it doesn't? I mean, are you going to have to cut somewhere else? Well, uh, we are. We're confident that the CARES Act dollars that we receive will cover the cost. And based on the operations director uh, report that we've had, we haven't finalized it yet, but we anticipate spending somewhere between 5 and $10 million. Uh, the $10 million figure I think you've gotten includes the soap and paper towels, which we have to acquire that anyway. So that's, that's uh, having an extra three months in supply added to that cost. But we are preparing to open school as safe as possible. We want to make sure the parents are involved in that process, and we encourage them to email us, call us, uh, participate in the, the public comment portion of our school board meeting on July the 7th so that we can hear from them and, and, and respond to the concerns, legitimate concerns that we all have at this point. Yeah, so it's interesting because a group of about 150 parents, as we know, uh, because they spoke on Tuesday, yesterday, you know, they're, they're raising this suggestion. Hey, why not, given the fact that the CDC has said this, as has Dr. Anthony Fauci, that face masks can prevent the spread of the virus, why not make them a requirement in classes? Well, the, government, the, the mayor has already required that you have to wear a face mask if you're six years or older. older. Uh, when you're dealing with elementary kids, uh, the requirement that they wear a face mask all day is a bit challenging. And that's why we have layers of protection. We, 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 were, we practiced the face mask, and we were criticized for doing that uh, at that time because, you know, we, we wanted to be prepared so that if we do open school in August, that we have those layers of protection. So we have the face mask, we're purchasing face shields for the elementary, I mean the K-2 second graders. We have the shields on the desk. So we have layers of protection to make sure that our kids are safe once they return to school. What about pushing back, and again, this group is also suggesting pushing back the start of the first day of school until after the Republican National Convention to allow for a better assessment of the spread of the virus, since there are concerns, given the fact that the president has said that he doesn't want social distancing or masks to be worn at the RNC. Why not push back the beginning? And I'm just asking based on what the group proposed to you on uh, yesterday. Uh, why not push back the start date? Well, we just approved the calendar and that process to approve and change calendar dates is one made by a number of groups, parents, teachers, uh, students are involved, uh, administration is involved in setting that calendar. We can adjust that calendar if needed. And uh, certainly the superintendent and her staff are willing to revisit that if necessary to make sure that we uh, remain as safe as possible. And 
Madam Chairman, so for teachers who are in the high-risk category, should they be infected with the virus, now that classes are planning to resume, what if they don't feel comfortable or safe? Are you concerned you might not have enough teachers who are returning for the next school year? Well, I think that's still that's an operational question. Uh, superintendent would have to answer that, but we're, we're looking at that, and we want to make sure as a board that we have enough teachers. We always There's always a shortage. Uh, hopefully with the new minimum salary increase uh, that will help alleviate the shortage of teachers. But we are concerned with those teachers who have compromised immune systems and if they are not able to teach in class, then hopefully we can make accommodations for those teachers to continue to work remotely. Duval County School Board Chairman Warren Jones joining us this morning via Zoom. Thank you, Chairman. Do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. We'll be right back.